that the Chinese Navy is procuring more and more ships is not news. That's been going on for decades. That the Chinese Navy is procuring more ships per year than the US Navy is perhaps also not news to most. That was going on for a few decades as well. But for the longest time those new Chinese ships were small designs, coastal ships. Their combined tonnage and therefore capability still trailed behind the US Navy fleet. But in recent years that too changed. This video will go in detail on the recent trends and the great naval arms race. Today Chinese Navy is using cutting edge technology. But allow us a minute for the Japanese steel cutting edge of Kamikoto knives, which are sponsoring this video. Kamikoto makes awesome kitchen knives using traditional Japanese techniques. The steel used is sourced only from steel mills in Japan. Each knife comes in a beautiful heavy duty ashwood box. It would make for a great gift really. They're nicely weighted and balanced, perfect for the job set before them. And Kamikoto's product range includes many different knives. There's the three-piece Kanpeki knife set for example, or the seven-inch Santoku knife or steak, vegetable and other knives. Available accessories include a sharpening whetstone as well. Each knife is individually inspected and the knives come with a lifetime guarantee as Kamikoto is pretty confident about their product. The knives are even used by several chefs working at Michelin star restaurants. So if you want one, now's the time to jump in. Kamikoto is currently having a special sale. And on top of that sale, Binko viewers can get extra $50 off any purchase, just by using the discount code BINKO. So click the link below or go to kamikoto.com slash BINKO, use the code and save on some great knives. While it's pointless to go way back into history, to the 1990s or even 1980s, as some ships launched back then have already been retired, we do need to start somewhere. So we'll start in 2001. Back in that year, the naval vessels built for the Chinese Navy included just two ships, a small frigate and a medium-sized landing ship. Back in that year, the US didn't procure many more ships, but their total tonnage was much, much greater. The next four years, ending with 2005, saw a steady rise in the number of combat ships launched for Chinese Navy each year, while the US numbers remained roughly the same. Of course, the combined tonnage of US ships was still visibly greater. As one can see, Binkov will include submarines in the tally as well as various assault ships, like amphibious assault ships, and aircraft carriers, naturally. Of course, there were other naval vessels as well, big ones like logistics ships and smaller ones like mine warfare ones, and so on. But ships like those are excluded from the list for simplicity's sake. Small attack boats are included even though only China built them, but that shows just how insignificant they can be in the overall tally. For example, without such attack boats included, China would have had 46 vessels launched, not 62. Yet the combined tonnage would still remain at nearly 210,000 tons. Indeed, back then, Chinese ships were less capable overall on an individual ship comparison basis. Chinese landing ships launched back then were five times smaller. One can imagine what that means for overall cargo capacity, range, etc. While the US launched only destroyers that displaced 9000 tons, principal surface combatants for China featured much smaller frigates, mixed in with the destroyers which were still smaller than the US ones. And of course, a nuclear fuel powered submarine is much bigger and more potent than a diesel electric submarine. The following five years, from 2006 through 2010, actually saw a dip in the number of newly procured Chinese ships, especially once the small attack boats are taken out of the tally. Without the small, fast attack boats, the overall number was very small actually, smaller than the number of comparable ships the US Navy added, and the combined tonnage trailed greatly behind the US one. While for the US those five years were a period of business as usual, the Chinese industrial foundations were undergoing huge changes. Some Chinese shipyards were relocating in that period, basically constructing huge industrial complexes and training a massive number of new workers that would fuel the great expansion in the future. In effect, during those five years, there were only a few Chinese shipyards actually working and making ships, which is why there were hardly any destroyers launched back then. Chinese frigates got bigger, with the new 054 class in production, 
and the older O-72 landing ships gave way to a new, much bigger class. The O-71 is a ship comparable to the US San Antonio class. Then, from 2011 onward, everything changed. During the next five years, through 2015, Chinese shipyards now in full capacity surged ahead. The Chinese Navy obviously had a lot of orders prepped for them. Not only was the number of ships and submarines launched much greater, but the combined tonnage was by then very, very close to the US combined tonnage of launched ships. The US saw a new class of ship, the littoral combat ship. Basically a small sized frigate, but lightly armed. In some ways its armaments were comparable to the new Chinese small ship, the O-56 class corvette. Even though the O-56 was even smaller. The US ship was designed to travel the ocean and operated high speeds far away from bases, in other countries littoral waters if needed. Being designed to operate in littoral areas right next to its own coastline, the Chinese O-56 could be made much smaller. The Chinese Corvette basically became the next generation small surface combatant for its navy, as the production of the small fast attack boats, like the O-22 class, ended by 2010. The US had paused making their Burke class destroyers for much of the period, and launched the first of the ill-fated Zumwalt destroyers. It was a time when some plans for the future fell apart, and Burke destroyers were ultimately chosen to soldier on, being built for years to come. Those five years also saw the launch of the first Chinese aircraft carrier. It was half the size of the US carriers, but a significant event for the Chinese Navy nevertheless. The next generation of Chinese destroyers were pouring out of the shipyards though, and that would continue in the years to come as well. From 2016 to 2020, China launched over twice the number of ships for its navy than the US did, and more importantly, their combined tonnage was 50% bigger than the US tonnage. Even when smaller ships on both sides are removed from the tally, the US launched 20, while China had launched 47 ships and submarines. Of course, some differences still remained. China still launched conventional submarines, alongside its nuclear ones, while the US almost matched their combined number with nuclear subs alone. The second Chinese carrier was still barely half the size of the US one, but Chinese destroyers exploded in numbers. Not only that, but they got bigger, as the new models came out, while the US curtailed its big Zumwalt destroyer program at just three ships. China also outpaced the US Navy in the number of large landing ships, as well as introduced its first flat deck assault ship, comparable to the US Wasp class, but slightly smaller. Last year, in 2021, China continued the trend of launching both more ships and ships of greater tonnage than the US, but only barely. While both sides had a huge slump from previous years, the Chinese one was more noticeable, due to very high levels of those previous years. Thus the last 21 years of new ships launched from shipyards and destined for Chinese and US navies is summed up in this table. Despite an occasional temporary drop, it's evident that China has been making more ships than the US in the last 20 odd years, and that the overall trend or discrepancy in numbers has been getting worse for the US. When it comes to overall combined tonnage of ships and submarines, the US had a vast advantage 20 years ago but has since been stuck at levels which China overshot. Now, in the last two years, there's been a visible drop in Chinese numbers. China seems to be rearranging some of its priorities. First, it had stopped building the O-54 class frigate some years ago. Then in 2020, there was news that 20 additional frigates would be procured as production restarted. And indeed, in 2021, we saw the first additional frigates launched. At the same time, China started retiring all of its patrol variant O-56 class corvettes. That's 20 ships in total, even though the oldest one is just 9 years old. Ships themselves are being given to China's Coast Guard. It's likely we'll see more O-54 class frigates in the coming years. After a pause in conventional submarine procurement, 2021 saw the first of the new submarine variants launched so that's likely to continue in the next few years as well. Curiously, destroyer production has had a pause. The last three were launched in 2020, after that high of 10 in 2019. There are rumors that a new batch of destroyers were contracted for, 
and there are some blurry images suggesting destroyer production may have resumed. Two such ships seem to be on track to be launched before the end of the year. Large landing ships are still under a pause, with no additional such ships observed in construction. But the biggest addition to the Chinese Navy in 2022 will definitely be their third carrier. It's a new class, sporting catapults, and it is as big as the initial US supercarriers, before the mammoth Nimitz class. Given that the US is not scheduled to launch any carriers in 2022, the overall numbers are likely to stay on the Chinese side. Besides new destroyers, frigates, landing ships and possibly even another carrier by 2025, China's biggest addition over the next five years could be its nuclear submarines. A vast sprawling complex has been under construction for the last several years, and work on the new generation of Chinese subs was started. It's quite possible we'll see the first subs launched from there by the end of this year, and given the ample size of the complex, enough to have several subs in assembly at the same time, there may be many, many nuclear subs coming out of there in the coming years. So while making a projection all the way to 2025 is a thankless task, we'll still give it a try. Luckily, at least the US building schedule is transparent enough that their numbers can be more or less guesstimated. As one can see, the US does seem to be switching to a somewhat higher gear, especially when it comes to submarines and frigates. Figuring out Chinese numbers entails much, much more guesswork. A low-end estimate using the 2022 projection and a pretty low volume of new ships comparable to 2020 and 2021 would suggest a bit smaller overall tonnage than the US in the same period. But if China repeats the pace it held in the 2017 through 2019 period, then such a higher-end estimate might yield quite different numbers. Now, even that estimate may ultimately prove itself to be conservative. It's not really based on much since data coming out of China is scarce. But there are rumors of those additional O-54 class frigates being planned, of 8 more O-55 class destroyers being planned, more landing ships planned, and we saw that restart of conventional submarine construction, which will fill out the overall submarine numbers once the big new facility starts churning out nuke subs. The number of old ships in the Chinese Navy is dwindling quickly. A dozen old O-53 class frigates remain, and a dozen of obsolete Ming class submarines. Pretty much all destroyers have either been modernized or built in the last decade, so additional ships and subs would require an increase in Navy personnel numbers, infrastructure and so on. Yet, as we see, China does seem to be counting on just that, not just replacing its older ships but adding new ships on top of almost new ships. But all that's in the future. Who knows what the actual build rate of new Chinese ships will be. What's evident today is that China has caught up to the US in the tonnage of ships launched each year. Even on a ship-by-ship -ship basis, some Chinese ships are now equivalent to the US ones, similar in tonnage. The US Navy, of course, still holds quite an advantage in pure numbers, as a big part of its fleet in service today was built in the 1970s, 80s and 90s, but as the years go by, ships inevitably get worn out and have to be retired. The US will be hard pressed to increase its fleet from today's numbers, especially to increase the combined fleet tonnage, because each year there will be so many old ships retiring that newly built ships will have a hard time keeping up. On the other hand, the Chinese Navy is in such a rapid buildup and has already retired so many of its older ships that it likely won't reach the point where the sustainment of old ships will overshadow the influx of new ships for at least 20 more years. It will be 20 quite interesting years to come, to say the least.